Welcome to the Love Positivism Podcast. I'm Shireen Oberg and I'm a yoga teacher and author devoted to the path of healing and heart-based living. And I want to help you to step into what you truly are and to your highest potential. On this podcast, I share with you tools and insights to help you move ever forward on your spiritual and healing path. With guests from all over the world, from different wisdom traditions, I wish to create a web of loving energy that permeates the whole world to create more love and peace. You can connect with me on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube for more guidance and love. Hello to all you loving beings. Thank you so much for being here. We have just had an intense eclipse and we're coming close to also the summer solstice, the day which is the most potent light and warmth because the sunlight is stronger than the darkness. And I will be hosting next Wednesday on the 23rd of June a summer solstice and midsummer celebration. So it's a mix of the summer solstice and also the midsummer or lita uh, energy that is has been for many many centuries been uh, celebrated as the time of uh, fire and sun energy so the the workshop or the celebration that i will do is all about this potent time and i will be talking also about rituals and things that we can do throughout that time. It's a time of really abundance and fertility, so we can really work with magic and with intentions to to set the tone for the upcoming period. So if you want to join me on that, you have the link in the show notes. It's going to be next week on the 23rd. And also on this Saturday, the 19th, I will be hosting a yin yoga and Chinese medicine workshop for one and a half hour. And it's a fundraising class, which is connected to the event Tune to Heal, which is a foundation and fundraising for people in India, certain areas where they have been very hit by the pandemic and uh, there's a financial crisis. So if you want to join me, it's uh, completely donation-based and you will also get access to many other classes and teachers throughout the weekend. So you can check that out as well in the show notes. I have the link there. And this week's episode is all about the summer and fire season in Chinese medicine. My guest is Rachel Apple. We talked previously on the podcast about the spring season, the wood element. Now we're in summer and fire element. So we wanted to share with you what you can do and practices, foods, and just the the connection to uh, nature and your body in this season. So we talk about the Chinese medicine five elements, uh, about the fire element and the fire season. We talk about the heart, which is connected to this season as a meridian and organ. And we share foods and drinks and practices that can benefit the heart uh, and the small intestine, which is connected to the heart in, in Chinese medicine. So it's not really... Uh, the Western medicine way of thinking about these organs. So I hope that you enjoy this episode and that you can take away some wisdom and knowledge from this ancient practice of Chinese medicine. And Rachel, who's my guest, she's a, a acupuncturist and traditional Chinese medicine practitioner. And she's also a yoga instructor. And she's in Colorado and um, she also is uh, working towards becoming a Vedic meditation instructor and yeah I'm also very excited to before the episode start to give so much love and gratitude to my 
show partners who are helping me to make this podcast available to you. And they are Ace of Air. And uh, they're a newly launched beauty and wellness brand committed to products to put people and planet above all. Their line of clean, vegan and cruelty-free skincare and supplements have been synergistically formulated at the intersection of herbalist wisdom and modern science, focusing on rituals that work from the inside out. Inspired by Mother Nature's ability to create abundance without waste, Ace of Air is the first and only beauty and wellness brand designed to be entirely circular and fully zero waste. And you can explore and learn more about Ace of Air at aceofair.com and find them also on Instagram at Ace of Air. So I hope you enjoyed this episode and also check out Ace of Air to, uh, to just support a sustainable and circular brand like theirs and have a beautiful summer solstice hi rachel welcome to the podcast hi thank you so much thank you for being here again and as the last time i would love for you to share any meditation or mindfulness practice that you do on a daily basis that is really helpful for you to stay present sure yeah so for me my number one thing that um, keeps me grounded is practicing vedic meditation uh, two times every day and so i do this first thing when i wake up and then um, anytime between lunch and dinner in the afternoon and it's a mantra-based uh, meditation that I do for 20 minutes each time. Um, I've practiced that for about five years, maybe five and a half years now. And it has been total game changer for me, really just helps me uh, process through stress of life and stay grounded and feeling clear and all of the good things. Um, and then I also just spend a lot of time in nature. I feel like that is uh, a, a way to keep my mental health really strong and a way to just stay connected to natural cycles and the earth. And um, I think it's really important to appreciate the beauty that is surrounding us. Mm. Yeah, that's beautiful. Thank you so much for sharing that. And I would love for you to maybe share with the listeners who you are and what you do. Maybe people haven't listened to our uh, other ep episode. And yeah, you can start by this introduction. Sure. Okay. So my name's Rachel Apple. I live in Boulder, Colorado, and I'm an acupuncturist and herbalist. Um, I grew up in Cincinnati, Ohio with uh, two Western doctors for parents. And so I've kind of always been around medicine in some shape or form. And I moved to Boulder about 11 years ago and was exposed to a lot of different alternative healing methods like, you know, yoga and meditation and acupuncture and herbs and um, really more a way of preventative health you know, instead of just having to address our symptoms when we're sick, um, there was a big focus on preventative health and staying healthy before you get sick. And it was just a totally different way of thinking. Um, and I actually, I got really sick in 2015. I got um, shingles and chronic fatigue syndrome and was really burnt out. And so at that point, I really started getting acupuncture and using some herbal medicine, and it, it really turned things around for me. And so I realized that I wanted to be able to give back in that way. And I went back to school for four years for Chinese medicine and uh, Chinese herbal medicine. And um, it was, yeah, a, a totally life-changing experience for me. Uh, and so now I have my own practice in Boulder, Colorado, where I practice the acupuncture and the Chinese herbal medicine. And I do a lot of body work and lifestyle and diet um, consultations. And yeah, it's just such a joy for me. I, I truly love my work and um, 
am so blessed to be living in Boulder doing this, um, doing this career. That's lovely. Thank you so much for sharing. And yes, we have this, uh, this uh, passion that we uh, are connected through with Jesus, Chinese medicine and acupuncture. And I agree that it's, it's so refreshing to be able to work in a holistic way on all levels, because even like when you think about acupuncture, you see the needles, but it's also like work on all levels, like emotional, mental, spiritual, energetic uh, layers of ourselves. So it's not just the physical body. And I think that's what we need for healing, that we connect all the layers together and understand the body as a full system. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's kind of the best part about ancient traditions like Chinese medicine is really looking at the body as a whole and the root of the issue rather than just the symptoms or what we call the branch Mm -hmm. Um, and just really making it more of an integrative medicine. I think it's so important. Exactly. And one of the things that we uh, work with in Chinese medicine, we look at the seasons and the elements of nature, which makes sense to, to because we are made by nature. Our bodies is the same as the material of nature. Um, and we, in our last uh, episode, we talked about the wood element because that was the element of spring and the growth and and the liver and all of that. And today we are going to talk. So in Chinese medicine, we have the five elements that are the foundation of, of, of the system of the body. And um, the, the organs are uh, categorized also by the elements and the meridians as well. So today we will talk about the fire element, which is connected to summer, right? Exactly. Yes. Yeah. And uh, maybe we can, maybe you can share shortly. Maybe some people are not familiar with, with this concept of the elements. Maybe if you want to share what they are, and then we can get into the fire element specifically and how to work with that. Yeah, absolutely. So the five elements are a way that we categorize nature and our own bodies Um, like Shireen was saying, and each season has an element associated with it. And so um, for summer, the element is fire. For late summer or um, autumn time, the element is earth. For fall, the element is metal. For winter, the element is water. And for spring, the element is wood. And so with each of these elements, you know, there is an organ pair, a yin and yang organ pair, uh, a color, an emotion, um, a type of weather, a sound, all these different characteristics. And it allows us to better understand the patterns happening within nature that are also happening within ourselves. Um, And it helps to, you know, connect us with the world around us and, when we align with these natural cycles, we'll really feel our best. Um, and when we, we can do this through, you know, activities that we choose, nutrition, food that we're eating, um, reframing our mindsets. And it's basically a way to mirror, mirror nature and uh, stay in the flow of the rhythm of the year and the cycles that are happening. Thank you for sharing that. And, and throughout um, the, the, well, in many traditions, the springtime is the first part of the year, right? Because it's when, um, when everything starts to grow and we have this uh, really expansive energy and moving forward and all of that. And, and the color green symbolizes that as well. And now we're kind of in a, a time of a lot of fruition and also the summer is so connected with being in nature and connecting to your heart. And I think also like in astrology, when we see like we have 
at the summer solstice, we have um, the cancer season starting, which is connecting to emotions. And then also then in uh, July and August, the Leo, which is definitely connected to the heart. So how is the fire element uh, categorized in Chinese medicine? Yeah, um, I'm, I'm a Cancer in Western astrology, so I definitely <laughs> can resonate with this time of year. And, mm. Oh, you are? Yeah. Oh, that's, <laughs> when's your birthday? It's 9th of July. Okay, I'm June 26th. Oh, really? That's not long from now. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's so Lovely. great. Yes. Yeah, so this is our this is our season. Um, but yeah, so the fire element is correlated with the heart and the small intestine organs. That's the yin yang pair. Um, it's associated with the color red, the bitter flavor, hot weather, the sound of laughter, uh, the, and the emotion of joy. And there are other associations, but those are kind of the main ones. And it is also the most young time of year. So just the most energetic time of year and a time when we're really um, tapping into our inner child and playing. And uh, we have a lot more of an extroverted feeling. And um, yeah, we just want to get out there and enjoy and socialize. So that's kind of the quality of the season. Yeah, and it's um, so it's really interesting what when we think about the heart as well that it's um, something that is so connected to uh, our our well being of the consciousness or the soul or or just feeling anchored and and uh, I'm thinking about Shen and all of this and it's so important for everything that has to do with uh, sleep and dreams and all of that I, I love that correlation it makes sense and also when we don't have how can an unbalanced fire element look like yeah so like you were saying since it is the season of the heart um, when the heart is out of balance in Chinese medicine then we can <clears throat> our symptoms can manifest as feeling overjoyed, like almost this manic feeling, uh, feeling more anxious, feeling burnt out, um, you know, literally fire element, you can think of just feeling that burnt out feeling, um, feeling overwhelmed, or kind of forgetful and absent minded. It's also possible to feel um, nervous and easily excitable. Um, to have, you know, some more acne or skin rashes. And then, as you were saying, having definitely issues with sleep, uh, some insomnia, some disturbed or vivid dreams, uh, waking frequently at night. And um, then some other heart issues that can come up are maybe some circulatory, circulatory issues or uh, maybe some palpitations. Um so those are kind of all related to the heart. And, you know, then there can also just be an energetic imbalance where we aren't feeling our, you know, most playful selves. And we kind of want to have this tendency to want to hide inside or we feel shy and we don't want to play. Um, or we might feel like overly serious. Um, and then the other tendency would be to um, overeat and eat more heavy foods because summertime is really about eating lightly and eating more raw. And um, yeah, so there, the opposite then would be to overeat and, you know, having more like fatty foods or oily foods or things that we would crave more during the winter time. So those are the main ways that we can feel out of balance in the summertime um yeah mm. yeah and an interesting thing is when let's say we have too much of this heat heart heat and i just want to mention also for the listeners we're we're not talking about the western way of seeing the heart and these organs it's it's a different concept so um the diagnosis and and um uh, the patterns that we see is, is something more of a holistic pattern and not like Western diagnosis. And 
what I'm thinking about is when the taste is bitter for uh, when you have heart heat, the bitterness can, what I've seen in my experience, like let's say coffee, it can actually stimulate too much heat. Have you seen that? Yeah, absolutely. And mm. that's kind of why, you know, we want to focus on eating more cooling foods in the summer. Mm. And that doesn't mean having like, you know, a fully raw vegan diet, because as we know, in both Ayurveda and Chinese medicine, raw isn't really emphasized that much, mm. but it's more just bringing in those a little bit, um, you know, along with your cooked foods, and then also avoiding more of the heating foods, and maybe not avoiding them completely, but limiting them more this time of year, um, mm. which includes, you know, like alcohol and coffee and processed sugar, and then, you know, any like really spicy or greasy foods that can all increase heat in the body. Mm. Exactly. So when we're talking about heat, it's not that you shouldn't eat warm foods. It's more the, the, um, uh, the quality of the food. Like, let's say if you uh, black tea is more heating while mm-hmm. green tea even if it's warm it's more cooling so right 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 and cinnamon can be more heating and then another um i think like coriander is more uh colder yeah exactly like even if you had you know, a hot coffee next to an iced coffee, both of them are still going to have the energetic quality of heating, even if one's cold and one's hot. Yeah. Yeah. So, but yeah, just like you said, green tea is definitely in the category of foods that are great for the summertime because Mm -hmm. they have more of a cooling nature. Um, You know, a few other foods you could bring in are like dark and bitter greens, watermelon, pineapple, cucumber, uh, you know, like spinach, radish, Zucchini is really great. Um, limes are actually better than lemons this time of year, which um, I, I learned from an Ayurvedic uh, practitioner, actually. I guess lemons mm-hmm. can be more warming than limes. Uh, I mean, both are great, but lime is a little bit more preferred. Mm-hmm. And then you can also you know, bring in herbs like basil or mint um you know you could make maybe like a spa water with some cucumber and some watermelon and some mint and keep that in your fridge at all times just to kind of enjoy a more flavorful um water that has some more minerals to it Mm. yeah I love that and one of the things that is important to uh, look for uh, which yeah it has to do with the heat I think one thing that is really um, happening in many people like you said if we've had stress for example and and we start feeling like that like anxious and and uh, palpitations and feeling like especially the sleep is really uh, we know that when we are stressed we sleep uh, worse because also the liver can can um, create this uh, imbalance that creates heat in the heart as well and then emotional things like I'm thinking about uh, certain traumas and things like that really uh, can affect this uh, uh, the shen or the heart um, how have you worked with that Yeah, I mean, I think it really depends on the pattern in the body because um, so there can be so many different things that happen to the heart in Chinese medicine. And that doesn't, you know, again, literally mean the heart, but more the energetic quality of the heart and the meridians that it's affecting in the body. Um, But, you know, there can be um, yin deficiency, which is more of a deficient heat, which can cause like red cheeks and night sweats. Then there can be, uh, you know, normal heat in the heart, which is more of an excess condition. And that's, you know, more profuse sweating all the time and red eyes and, you know, just heat in the body. And um, so it really depends. And then there can also just be pure heart deficiency, which can lead to insomnia and palpitations. So I really take it on a case by case basis. And, um, you know, so for example, if someone just had, um, 
classic heart heat, then I would really look at their diet and pull out the coffee and the alcohol and find some replacements for those things and um, see what types of foods they're eating and maybe offer some herbs to clear that heat from the body. Um, whereas the more of the deficient type of heat in the heart, the yin deficiency, then in that case, you want to make sure they're eating more yin building foods, giving them yin building herbs. Um, and yeah, things like that. How do you, how do you usually deal with the heart imbalances? I think that uh, exactly everything that you said, because it can be so, um, so interesting to uh, discover that also sometimes it's discovered through the pulse and the tongue, you know, the red tongue tip is really common. And, um, so I think like addressing the emotional issues uh, is really important. And then there's, like you said, the patterns and the history, like what has caused this can be so different. It's, it's really very individual and depending on what's been going on with the rest, because it's usually not that easy that it's only one <laughs> symptom or sign or one meridian or organ that is connected. But I think that the, uh, the, the stress can be definitely a, a big factor. And then what you said also that we like this whole young way of eating and, and drinking and also living creates this imbalance. So it's really important to like to complement the acupuncture with the with, uh, really lifestyle practices like meditations and right foods and like with everything it's it's healing on all levels so that's really important yeah definitely mm. and yeah and, and point, I feel like yeah go oh on. sorry go ahead. no you can go ahead <laughs> okay I was just gonna say I think you know as we've kind of mentioned in the past everyone has an element that they um are correlated correlated with the most or that their constitution resonates with the most. And so, you know, for someone who is naturally a fire element constitution, their stuff mm -hmm. might get a little bit more out of balance this time of year, you know, so for my patients who I know, like, okay, when they get stressed, or when they eat poorly, their imbalance goes to their heart meridian, then I'll just be a little bit more preemptive in treating those, um, those symptoms so that I can kind of get ahead of it before the summertime so that it's not like, you know, last minute trying to put the fire out liter literally, you know, mm. um, you know, and same thing goes with like the wood element uh, people in the spring, just people who have more of the headaches and get irritated by winds. Like we just always want to be a little bit ahead of the ball, just trying to make that seasonal transition easier for them. So they're not so miserable throughout the summer. Mm. Yeah, that's really true. But, and what kind of, uh, is there any like physical practice? Maybe you can describe the, the meridian and maybe if we need to work with, it's connected to the small intestine. How, how is that connection made? Yeah, um, so all of the meridians kind of start within the body and move through different organs before coming out onto the limbs. And so that's where the heart goes down into the small intestine and then it comes out um, kind of underneath the uh, armpit is heart one, it's in the armpit. And then it runs along the inside of the forearm and comes down along the inner left side of the arm, or I guess inner left side on the right arm and inner right side on the left arm. Mm -hmm. um, and then it comes down over the palm and ends on the pinky finger, um, kind of at the, um, the corner of the nail there on the pinky finger. Mm -hmm. And so ways that we could maybe stimulate the meridian would be to, you know, maybe rub rub some circles on your heart area and then just massaging down that inner forearm um, to the corner of your wrist and then up over your palm and ending on your pinky finger you can kind of squeeze your finger and um, pull your hand off of your finger kind of 
clearing some energy there. So that's one way to just stimulate that meridian through the summertime. Mm. Yeah, exactly. So there's, there's ways to uh, do f- like physical practices to it. And it's really accessible, this meridian. So it's really um, just feeling it, uh, visualizing it and, and working with that and working with the color and, and all of this to, um, to balance it. And I'm thinking also in Chinese medicine, the heart is very connected to the womb, right? Mm. So mm-hmm. how have you been working with that connection? Maybe you have patients that have certain things going on in the reproductive system. Yeah, I, th- I mean, I think everyone has you know, a slight bit of a heart imbalance, like we're all tweakers, you know, we all have Mm -hmm. our stress and especially women who are trying to conceive and maybe they're having a harder time conceiving causes a lot of stress. It can cause that Shen disturbance like we were talking about. And again, the Shen is kind of like the spirit or the soul it's related to the heart. And so Um, So often you see women who are so stressed trying to conceive and then when they finally give up and say, oh, well, that's when they conceive because they're Mm -hmm. releasing that, you know, constraint in the heart energy. And um, so I think the most important thing to do is to just help women who are trying to conceive to remain calm and keep their hearts open and reassure them that it's all working out for them and, um, yeah, just, you know, always adding in a few Shen or heart points while treating someone who's trying to conceive. Yeah, that's really good. And what else is important to know about this season and, and, and this um, organ and meridian? Yeah, so, you know, I think it's important to just put our attention on those areas. And, you know, if you Google the heart meridian Chinese medicine, you can really visualize it. Um, So maybe you're just putting your awareness on that area more. Like when you're driving, you could, you know, put your awareness into your pinky fingers. That's because that's kind of where the meridian ends Um, or just in your heart center. But um, there's lots of ways that you can remain in balance this season. And I can kind of go through those um, as just some takeaways for anyone listening to this today. Mm. Okay. So um, to make sure we don't feel these imbalances that I was talking about before, we, you know, most importantly, want to just make sure we're playing and that we're tapping into that inner child and enjoying the summer. The summer is really meant to be enjoyed. And even if we're working a nine to five and on our computers, it's fine. Just, you know, the days are longer. There's a much longer evening time. Uh, The sun's setting later. So we can still get out and play and, you know, go for a hike or go for a swim or um, have a barbecue, you know, just really make sure you are having time for fun and creativity and socializing and that you're laughing a lot. Like it's just so important to uh, experience that joy in the summertime. Mm -hmm. And, you know, especially after everything we've been through this year, we've been (laughs) so isolated and confined. I think more than ever, people are so excited to get out and socialize, um, you know, as best as we can, if, if where you're living is allowing that. Mm -hmm. Um, So, you know, another thing that's super important is to make sure that we're moving our bodies every day and it doesn't have to be through exercise, you know, it can be through dancing or um, just for like a nice walk and just making sure that we're getting our our circulation going. Um, And then, you know, another important thing while getting outside and playing is very uh, good for us. It's also good to, of course, always balance that sociable nature Uh, with some downtime and relaxation. And, you know, that could look like laying in a hammock in the shade or, um, you know, pulling out a blanket and having a picnic in the shade, just, you know, balancing that yang energy with a little bit of yin to, um, you know, always keep that yin intact. Mm -hmm. And let's see, some other things you can do are, um, you know, just make sure you're meditating, keeping your nervous system you know, at ease and 
making sure you're able to process that excess energy of summer that way so that, you know, you don't feel overly frantic or fried. Um, we can also, you know, plan ahead and prioritize our, pl- our um, activities just to avoid becoming scattered or forgetful. You know, it's, it's so fun to be spontaneous and to just live in the moment. And that's so great. But sometimes it is also nice to have a bit of that, um, that planning quality to keep us in line and, you know, ready for what's coming. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and then just the last few things would be to limit your exposure to extreme hot temperatures. So, you know, while it's great to get some sun exposure, it's not really the best time of year to like go to a hot yoga class or go into a sauna because we already are exposed to such high temperatures that we really want to balance that more with, you know, swimming in cool and refreshing water, taking a colder shower, maybe not cold showers, but a cooler shower. Um, and, you know, staying hydrated with like plenty of water and, um, again, eating those cooling and bitter foods, um, instead of the more warming foods. So that is kind of the gist. I feel like that's a lot to work with and a lot to think about, but I'd say, you know, the main takeaway is just making sure you are having a good time and tapping into your inner joy. Mm. Yeah, I think that's a perfect um, uh, advice. And are you sharing also um, a breathing exercise for this topic? Yeah, I would love to. Mm. Thank you. Of course. So yeah, we'll just end with a little simple breathing exercise that can really strengthen the heart meridian and um, the heart space in the summertime. And, you know, this can also be practiced anytime you are having a heavy heart or need an emotional clearing or, you know, just want to strengthen that heart area. But especially in the summertime, this is something that we can practice daily to stay balanced. So before we begin, I'll kind of just explain what we're going to do so you have a better idea. So we'll be inhaling and visualizing our heart space filling up with red healing energy and we visualize the red color because it's the healing color for the heart meridian and so then we'll inhale that red healing energy into the heart space and then we'll hold for a breath at the top and then on the exhale we're actually going to make a sound that sounds like ha h-a-a and we'll kind of draw that out so it sounds like ha (laughs) And this is actually the healing sound for the heart. So we're both combining, you know, the healing color as well as the healing sound. Um, And this will just really open that heart space for us. And we'll cycle through this nine times. And then at the end, we will um, bring our hands back to our lap and keep our eyes closed and just take a few moments in that silence. Mm, Sounds great. All right, so let's go ahead and close our eyes and find a comfortable seat. Um, If you're out for a walk, no worries. You can practice this while you're walking or maybe take a moment to stand and practice it. And let's just take a few deep breaths to settle into the present moment. And so now as we start to feel a bit more grounded and relaxed in the present moment, we can start to visualize our heart space. And, you know, we can tune into our emotions and how we're feeling today. Are you feeling joy, sadness, anger, fear? Do you have a heavy heart? Notice what's arising for you in this moment. And whatever is coming up, let's just set the intention to be with this emotion as we move through the breathing exercise. So there's no need to get rid of it or, you know, be upset that you're feeling any which way. Just can we feel the emotions and, and be with them? So 
So let's start the nine breaths. We'll inhale through the nose, filling up the heart space with red healing energy. Hold for a breath at the top. And then on the exhale, we'll make the sound ha. And again, inhale through the nose, visualizing red healing energy filling up the heart. Hold for a breath at the top. Exhale, ha. Inhale through the nose, filling up the heart space with red healing energy. Hold for a breath at the top. And exhale, ha. Inhale through the nose, filling up your heart space with red healing energy. Hold for a breath at the top. Exhale, ha. Inhale through the nose, filling up your heart with red healing energy. Hold for a breath at the top. And exhale, ha. Inhale through the nose, filling up the heart space with red healing energy. Hold for a breath at the top and exhale, ha. Inhale through the nose, filling up the heart space with red healing energy. Hold for a breath at the top. Exhale, ha. Inhale through the nose, filling up the heart space with red healing energy. Hold for a breath at the top. Exhale, ha. And last one, inhale through the nose, filling up the heart with red healing energy. Hold for a breath at the top. And exhale, ha. Keeping the eyes closed, bring your hands down to your lap. We'll take a few moments of silence here. Sitting in the essence of that red healing color and that heart healing sound. And slowly open your eyes. And that's it. Thank you so much for sharing that. That was beautiful and so easy also to practice to, I think everyone needs to connect with the heart center anyway. So it's a good practice to have like a short daily breathing exercise. So thank you so yeah. much for that. Yeah, and I feel like, you know, let's say, for example, you're feeling some anger, mm. you know, maybe you still feel the anger after the breathing exercise, but maybe there's a bit of a reframe about whatever you're feeling angry with, and mm -hmm. you can kind of move through the energetic block to process a bit better. So I think it's yeah, a great emotional clearing tool and a most emotional processing tool. Mm, definitely. And using the breath and the sound the voice is really healing as well together so i yeah, love that absolutely Lovely. 
And what is there anything else you want to share and what you're doing right now or anything that you're offering to the world? Yeah, sure. So I am practicing in Boulder. If you are in town, you know, come get a treatment from me. My website is namahawellness.com. You can follow me on uh, Namaha Wellness on Instagram or, you know, send me an email. It's just Rachel at namahawellness.com. And I'll be practicing, um, you know, for, for as long as I can. <laughs> so reach out and, you know, you can always ask me questions on Instagram or through email. And um, if you're not in Boulder, I do do uh, virtual consultations as well. So if that's something you're interested in, we can chat and see how that might work for you. Um, and yeah, I'm just, I'm so excited to be seeing more and more people in my practice uh, now that COVID has gotten a little better. And I was telling you earlier that I'm seeing some of my patients' faces for the first time um, now that we're not required to wear masks while we're treating patients in the room. And it's it's so nice to see people's smiles again. So I think, um, yeah, I'm just really excited for this summer and for what it will bring and um, just trying to, you know, not take any of it for granted and just enjoy, enjoy the play and enjoy um, the, yeah, young and energetic nature of this season. Mm, yeah, definitely. Beautiful shifts and uh, just healing a very healing time so i think it's going to be beautiful too and thank you so much for being here again and i hope to talk to you soon again about the next element i think it's going to be earth right yes yeah we'll yeah. do that in late summer early exactly. autumn to yeah. continue this wheel of the elements so i'm looking forward to talking to you again and i hope you have a beautiful summer thank you so much you too thank you Thank you so much for listening this week. I hope that you can harness the summer and fire season. And it's truly a potent time with the summer solstice as the sun appears to stand still in the sky and light overcomes darkness. And here in Sweden, we really celebrate the midsummer a couple of days after the the summer solstice as a celebration of nature, fertility, love, and everything that is so abundant all around us. And if you want to join me for my summer solstice and midsummer celebration next week online, you can click the link in my bio. It will be beautiful and magical, and we will do meditation together and also other practices that are really potent for this time. So I hope you have a beautiful week and weekend and hope to see you soon. Om Shanti Shanti Shanti.